Hey, what's up YouTube? Texas Backyard Gardener and uh, today I wanted to share something with y'all. I know it's been kind of winter. Uh, well, it has been the winter season. So everything's kind of slowed down. For me, um, I'll be honest, I'm not too comfortable with planting, you know, in the winter time. I haven't really, you know, grasped the whole concept of, uh, you know, growing lettuce. I personally don't eat a lot of lettuce. Um, I do enjoy my broccoli from time to time, but I'm not really a big broccoli person. Uh, what else grows good in the winter? Um, you know, any type of leafy greens, I guess. Spinach grows pretty good. I am a big fan of spinach. It just takes forever to freaking grow. So, you know, but once it gets started, it's not really that bad. But um, so my my winters are kind of cooled off a little bit. I don't really do much except prep the garden, kind of do some maintenance, and uh, just kind of do some stuff like that. But um, on the 30th of uh, January, uh, because I get paid on the 15th and 30th, um, I wanted to get some more seeds and I needed something being here in Little Elm Frisco area you know it's blazing hot and it's not like I've got a lot of shade in my backyard because I don't have any trees in the backyard so it's just wide open so I mean the Sun literally comes over or maybe it comes this way on camera um, the Sun comes over and it just it just beats down so I was looking for some varieties of tomatoes and peppers to grow this year in 2016 for spring and summer uh, that's real heat tolerant and that are real uh, disease resistant um, so I'm going to try to change it up a little bit and I ordered I ordered some seeds and I forgot actually where I even ordered this from oh I ordered this from tomato grower supply company so um, I don't know if y'all can see that by company yeah so I ordered, I ordered some seeds, and honestly, I forgot what the heck I ordered. I know I ordered, I think, like three different types of peppers, and um, I don't know, two or three different. I think, I think it was only two tomatoes. I'm not really sure, but um, yeah. And each of these varieties are extremely heat tolerant, which is cool. I mean, let me see. See what they got in here. There's my invoice. There's a uh, how to start your seeds. So it's talking about eggplants, peppers, and tomatoes and stuff like that. Uh, invoice and here's the uh, seeds. It looks like I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six seeds. Now I don't know if I ordered. Did I order six? One, two, three, four, five. I just ordered five. So, what are the King Arthur? Okay, so this one is the King Arthur hybrid. Uh, this is like a, uh, this is what it says. It says a very large four lobed blocky bell pepper is hard to beat for its earliness and large size. Fruit becomes four and a half inches long and wide and seems to set well even in the heat. Plants provide good foliage cover and are resistant to two types of bacterial spot and three pepper viruses. So hopefully this King Arthur hybrid and it says 60 to 75 days to maturity. I just got the little sample packets. There's like 30 seeds in here uh, and it was only for like uh, 250, three bucks. Um, this one is the Emerald Fire X3R Hybrid. Uh, these uh, are 30 seeds in this one as well. This one matures in 65 days. It says extra large and tasty jalapenos grow on vigorous compact plants that set a huge amount of concentrated fruit. Thick walled and glossy green. These four inch long peppers are great for stuffing, grilling, canning, and using in salsa. They have a 2,500 Scoville units of heat, which is perfect for most taste. So it's not real hot. Um, 
hot to me is like anything above like well I would say not hot but spicy anything above like 6,000 is kind of hot so 2,500 is not really that hot especially if you eat peppers all the time uh, I mean that's that's perfect for stuff wrap some turkey bacon around there regular bacon pop it in there and you're good to go get your jalapenos uh, recipes ready to make use of this very large harvest from these disease resistance plants so again these are uh, disease resistant and um, good for heat. Uh, oh, so let me show you. I don't know if you can see that. If it'll zoom in. King Arthur uh, Emerald Fire Hybrid. There you go. Uh, the next one is a Key West X3R Hybrid. These mature in 70 days. Another, you know, 30 seeds in this one as well. This is uh, sweet Cubanel pepper. Peppers are up to 6 to 7 inches long and excellent for frying or eating fresh in salads. Light green, four-lobed peppers are most often eaten in the green stage, but when they turn red, they become even sweeter and more nutritious. Vigorous plants are resistant to three races of bacterial spots. So huge win on that one. Um, you know, I don't want to get in the whole heirloom versus hybrid. You know, a I just grow vegetables. I grow what I think will do well in my environment in North Texas, and we're just gonna roll with that. So that's uh, that's what that is. So Key West is another type of bell pepper. It's kind of longer type bell pepper but um, yeah hopefully this will go good uh, I also got the grape tomato grape tomato this is an indeterminate tomato so if this grape tomato goes well best believe I'm gonna be pulling clones off of it uh, this matures in 60 days long grape like clusters of brilliant red elongated cherry tomatoes have earned this variety its name very sweet, complex flavor is delicious and has made these tomatoes a favorite of people everywhere. Vigorous vines are very productive, but none of these delectable little morsels will go to waste. Crack resistant and tolerant to heat and a number of tomato diseases. So very good. So this is what I'm going to kind of do on these. Uh, I get 20 seeds in this one for the grape tomato. So this is what I'm going to kind of do. I'm going to kind of test it, right? So with the tomato diseases and everything like that, I'm going to plant all 20 of these seeds and pick out the strongest ones. Um, but on my clones, because I'm definitely pulling clones off of this if this goes good. On my clones, I'm going to set some clones and I'm going to spray some with aspirin and some with not aspirin, pretty much. Um, and I'll do another video on aspirin if you want, but aspirin kind of tricks the plant. To thinking there's there's a disease on it and so it boosts its immunity and makes it more stronger and tougher you know in its early stage of life so uh, but these are resistant to diseases well it doesn't give a number but it says a number of tomato diseases so if it's that resistant and it go, goes well and I don't have to spray aspirin on it you know twice a month then we're rolling with this one uh, again and again because I'll save seeds from the fruit and kind of go with that uh, what's this one sweet Chelsea VFNT hybrid this one is uh, 67 days to maturity 30 seeds it's an indeterminate as well this says jumbo sized cherry tomatoes with extra sweet taste resistant resist cracking better than the fruit of sweet 100 Vigorous vines tolerant to 10 different diseases should be staked or caged. 18 to 20 fruits per cluster. Harvest lasts until frost. So, hey, this sweet Chelsea uh, VFNT hybrid, if this goes good, psh, it's going to be a keeper too. Check it out. So that's, that's that one. Oh, and the grape tomato as well. I don't even know if y'all can even read that on the screen. This is the free bonus packet. So they, they sent me a free bonus packet. Um, 
And it says, this this variety is Sprite. They, they call it Sprite. There's 30 seeds in here. And it matures 60 days. And it says determinant. Okay, so this is a determinant. This is a determinant tomato. And I'll read you what it says on here. If you love grape tomatoes, which I like the grape tomatoes, and I like the cherry tomatoes. Honestly, the big massive uh, tomatoes, like the, the celebrity tomatoes and the big tomatoes, the beef steaks and all that stuff, I personally hadn't had that, that great of luck with them. So I'm not going to grow them again this year. I tried to grow them the beef steak. Didn't work out. Uh, celebrities made. I still have the big tomatoes sitting on my counter. They're ripe. I just hadn't ate them. Cherry tomatoes, man, I could pop those like, I mean, I could literally pop those like candy. I can cut them in half. I can throw them in the skillet, mix them with some olive oil, some basil, rosemary, bake them. Man, I could do all kinds of stuff with cherry tomatoes. So I'm a, I'm a fan of cherry and grape. But it says if you love grape tomatoes, you don't, but you don't have the space for supports to grow tall plants, Sprite offers a wonderful alternative. There is no sacrifice in fruit quality, size, productivity, or flavor. Just shorter plants for smaller gardens. The small red oval grape tomatoes are born in amazingly large numbers on compact plants. Their taste is refreshingly sweet and skins are thin and crisp, just like the original grape tomatoes. So there you go, Sprite. So I got a determinant uh, grape tomato. I got two. I got the grape, the other grape tomato, which is indeterminate. I got my sweet Chelsea hybrid, uh, which is an indeterminate. Also got my long bell pepper called Key West. Uh, I got my Emerald Fire jalapeno, and then I've got my King Arthur hybrid. Um, that uh, you know are are the long, not so hot jalapenos. So hey. I'm good. What I'm going to grow this year, I'm definitely going to grow these six different types of plants. Um, I'm also got some trombone chini uh, uh, squash that I'm going to try to grow. I need to order the seeds for sure and uh, get those in. Squash, I'm going to go right to the ground. I'm not, I'm not going to start them indoors or nothing like that. I'm popping them in the ground. The tromboncini's uh, squash are the big long ones. They get like 30 inches in length with a big bulb on them. Those bad boys apparently are resistant to the squash vine borer and squash bugs, so they don't really like them that much. I'm going to check it out. I'm going to try it and see if it works. If it works in my area, hey, I'm going to grow them again uh, next year. I'm just going to keep growing. Uh, this year, I don't know if I'm going to plant corn, but I'm definitely planting cantaloupe and I'm planting watermelon. Uh, Little Miss Texas Backyard Gardener, my daughter, man, she she really wants some watermelon and some cantaloupe. So I'm going to go ahead and plant it. I don't know where I'm going to plant it at, though. I'm not a big fan of eggplant. I don't know. It just doesn't seem appealing to me. Maybe I just had not had a really awesome recipe. I don't know. So if you got any recipes, ideas, I'm not opposed to growing eggplant. I just, I don't know. Eggplant, it doesn't really sound attractive to me. So I don't know. Um, what else am I going to grow this year? Golly, I want to try to grow beans again. Golly, I hope the birds don't eat them up and the ants. I had a bad ant problem out there just chomping away on my beans. Um, I had some blue lake and some pole beans out in the front yard. I had some long Thai beans. I'm going to try to grow the long Thai beans again this year. I may try to grow them, um, what you call it, in the backyard instead of the front yard. Front yard, I have no clue what I'm going to grow in the front yard. I'm not going to do okra. I don't really eat okra um, like that, and I had a ton of it last year on the side of the house, and it just, I actually still got like two bags of okra sitting in the freezer. I, I can't give it away. Everybody I know don't really like okra, and it's just sitting in there. Great grower. It produced well, but I just don't eat it. So I don't know. So I've got my six, my six uh, uh, plants right here. I've also got my cayenne peppers that I've started indoors and I've topped already. Um, let's see what else. I got, uh, I've got like, golly, I probably got a good eight 
really strong cayenne pepper plants over there sitting under the lights right now. I started them in uh, November or late October, and uh, I've already topped them. They're just bushing out like crazy, so they'll be good to go on the ground. I need to get these. Uh, I need to get these peppers started indoors asap. I just don't know if I'm going to have enough room uh, in there because I want them to get an early start, and I want to. Um, make sure they have a good start before I put them outside. And I'm not going to start them in May. I want to actually transplant at the end of April and going into May when they've already established a good root system, the stalk is kind of barked up a little bit, and I've topped them, and they've started putting out side shoots to where they're really established. Because I want them to go out there, I want to give them a good uh, nitrogen boost, um, and I want them to hit the floor running and just start popping fruit, uh, at least within 45 days. So that's that's kind of my plan. So I got my peppers, I got my uh, cherry tomatoes, my grape tomatoes, my long Thai beans, my pole beans, my cantaloupe, my trombone chinis, uh, you know, my large squash. Um, I'm not doing corn this year. I'm doing uh, the cantaloupe and watermelon. So that's what I plan on doing this year. Maybe, maybe I'll try broccoli and um, what you call it, broccoli and spinach this fall. Uh, maybe I'll give it a shot. I don't know. So anyway, that's kind of what I'm growing. This, uh, what I'm going to start with this spring. And um, what you call it. Oh, and you know what? I may go ahead and do some... Uh, uh, you know the Black Beauty squat, uh, zucchini and the Crookneck squash because I bought some row covers so I can I can bend some PVC throw my row covers on there they're six and a half foot wide by 15 foot long and I can try to you know cover it to try to prevent squash bugs either way I'm growing the trombone chinis and uh, try to get some squash because man you can stir fry that stuff up throw some rice teriyaki sauce throw your chicken in there Mm, mm, mm. that's good protein and veggies that's where it's at all right y'all so if y'all like the video just kind of wanted to share what i'm growing this year if you got any questions about anything i'm doing or if you got any tips tricks helpful hints send them to me uh give, give me a thumbs up share this video if you think you know or if you live around this area and you're not really sure you know what to grow or whatever you know I don't know, these may be some options, but I'll definitely let you know uh, how these grow uh, this year because I'm, I'm going to continue creating these videos and everything like that and uh, keep everybody updated because honestly, if I find some good peppers and tomatoes that grow well, I'm sticking with them. There's no point in changing, in my opinion. I'll have a test bed where I can test other stuff, but man, I want some steady producing crops that I can always count on. Now, I know you can't always count on everything, but that predominantly do very well for me, and that's what I want to stick with. So anyway, give me a thumbs up. Hit the like button below. And uh, yeah, if you haven't subscribed, you just ran across this video, subscribe. Till next time, peace.